What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a little Ryzen laptop that I recently turned into a Steam Top. That's exactly what I'm going to be calling it here. And you know, when it comes to the Steam Deck, awesome little handheld gaming machine, huge fan of it, but right now it's definitely hard to get your hands on. And there's a lot of people out there jonesing to get some Linux gaming going. So what I've done here is taken one of my favorite little Lenovo laptops powered by a Ryzen 5500U and I've basically turned it into a little Steam Top along with the Steam Deck UI. Now for this, I'm running Manjaro and there's several different versions of Manjaro that you can run, but I wanted to get as close as possible to the operating system on the Steam Deck, which is based on Arch. And in the future, once Valve releases SteamOS 3.0 as an ISO we can install on any PC, that would definitely be the way to go. But for now, we've got Manjaro on here with the Steam Deck UI in Steam, and this little thing actually performs really, really well. So we're just using integrated graphics, but if you do have a gaming laptop with something like a GTX 1650, you can always install this same setup here and get much better performance out of it. But I was really interested to see how the 5500U handled Linux gaming, and overall, I'm pretty impressed. Now the CPU here is still based on Zen 2, given that we have the 5500U, and the graphics are based on Vega, so we don't have RDNA 2, but if you want to make something now, this would be an awesome little option. And by the way, this is a 2-in-1, so we do have that touch screen. This is a Lenovo IdeaPad Pro. You can actually find these with the 4500U for a bit cheaper than the 5500U, but we've got that Ryzen 5 5500U. It's got 6 cores, 12 threads with a boost up to 4 GHz, built-in Radeon 7 graphics up to 1800 MHz, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and I'm running Manjaro Linux with the GNOME desktop. So there are a lot of these cheaper 5500U laptops on the market, but I would highly recommend getting something like a Lenovo because from the BIOS, we can actually up the TDP. If we turn this to performance mode from the BIOS on these Lenovo laptops, it takes this up to 30 watts instead of 15. It also changes the fan curve to keep this APU nice and cool, but at 30 watts, the 5500U is actually a really nice little setup. I've tested a very similarly spec HP laptop, and unfortunately from the BIOS, we can't change the TDP. But there are third-party applications you can install in Linux and Windows to up that wattage, but with these Lenovo's, just changing one thing in the BIOS brings that performance way up on these lower end chips. All right, so here we are with Manjaro. And like I mentioned, I'm using the GNOME version. I think it looks really good. I usually go with the Plasma version. And with the GNOME version, for some reason, Steam wasn't pre-installed like it is with the other Manjaro distro. So I did have to load that up. When it comes to extra apps to help out with performance on this APU, I didn't download anything or enable anything except for that BIOS setting. The 5500U at 30 watts is about the max you want to run that, especially with the cooling system in this idea pad. And aside from Steam and enabling Proton or Steam Play to play our games on Linux, there are two other apps I usually like to use. Mango HUD along with Go Overlay. Now this isn't going to increase performance of our laptop, but it's going to give us a nice performance overlay just like on the Steam Deck. And this is totally customizable. This is actually what the Steam Deck uses. It's going to give us our GPU clock, CPU clocks, frame rate. We can set it up basically however we'd like. But unfortunately, on the 5000 series APUs, at least in my experience with the way I have everything set up, I cannot get the wattage to display for the CPU and the GPU. On older 3000 series and 4000 series APUs, never had an issue. And I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It might be the new update for Mango HUD, but it only displays zero watts. But with the newer version of Go Overlay, down here in the bottom right hand corner, we have the option to launch Steam with Steam Deck UI. It just makes it really easy to get this up and running. And you could always do this manually by modifying a couple files, but it's right here. And all you have to do is launch it from that drop down. And now we've got the Steam Deck UI. Again, this isn't going to help out with performance. I just personally like the way it looks. And with this touch screen built into this laptop, it does work with touch or basically any other controller you connect over USB or Bluetooth. But yeah, basically the only thing I've done with this laptop is enable performance mode from the BIOS on that 5500U and set up Go Overlay. And when the 5500U is at 30 watts, it does perform really well with Linux gaming. Real quick, I do want to mention that these first two games I used my camera to film the laptop screen. My camera was set to 30 FPS, so it might look a little odd. But with all of the other games you're going to see in this video, I used my game capture card. That way we could get a true 60 out of it. 
But first up, we've got Street Fighter V, 720p with a low medium mix. And the way I like this setup at 720p, especially on these APUs, is basically everything at low except for textures. I usually set that to medium or high if I have enough power. And we're running at 60, I mean, the game feels great. And it doesn't look bad at 720p, especially when you can up those textures. It does make a bit of a difference going up the medium from low. But this is running fine, and I wouldn't mind playing it like this all day. Next up, we've got The Witcher 3, and I was really hoping that we could hit a steady 60 with it, but we're only right there at the edge. Now, if we did have an FSR option for this game here, I'm sure we could get it up there, because we're at an average of around 54. Not too bad, and really, if you just wanted to lock it at 30, it would probably work out just fine and run very well. Here's Project Cars 2, and this one's always been all over the place when it comes to APUs. Uh, on certain tracks, we can get averages in the 80s, other tracks under 60, some tracks 70. It's just one of those hit or miss games when it comes to integrated graphics. Okay, so I just swapped over to my game capture to make it a little easier. Here we have Injustice 2, 720p with a low medium mix. Textures at medium, I also have shadows at medium with this one, but everything else is set to low. I have seen a few dips under 60, couple in the cutscenes, a couple in gameplay, but they're few and far in between. But I gotta say I'm really impressed with the performance of the 5500U and those built-in Vega 7 graphics. They're not RDNA 2, but with a little more wattage, remember we're running this at 30 watts, the Steam Deck only runs at 15, we're getting some decent performance out of this APU. Wonder Woman wins. But now it's time to test a couple harder to run games. Here we have Elden Ring, 720p, low, and we just can't quite match what the Steam Deck can do. Now we will be able to run this at a constant 30, but on the Steam Deck I get an average of around 42, here we're getting an average of around 35. But going into this game I actually wasn't expecting this kind of performance. We're far from 60, we're far from 1080p, but at 720p, 30, this little system can run it. final game I'm going to test for this video is God of War, we're at 720p low with Fidelity FX set to performance. So we're even lower than 720p, but it's really not that bad. On the Steam Deck, I usually run this locked at 30 with the graphic settings at original, but since we don't have an RDNA 2 based iGPU with this APU here, we did have to take it down to low. It's definitely not as portable as the deck, but they're kind of hard to get your hands on right now, and if you're interested in putting something like this together, as you saw in this video, you can definitely do it. I would highly recommend testing out Manjaro on what you have. You can run it from a USB drive. I've actually done a video showing you how to set it up on a desktop PC. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. It's not far off on a laptop, but I can do a dedicated video turning one of these into a Linux gaming PC if you want to. It's definitely a low-end gaming PC, just like the Steam Deck would be, but with the 5500U, we are working with a bit more CPU power than the Steam Deck. Unfortunately, the integrated graphics here are based on Vega instead of RDNA 2, so the iGPU in this just can't keep up with the Steam Deck. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. That 5500U at 30 watts actually impressed me. I knew we weren't going to get the kind of performance the Steam Deck can put out given the iGPU in this, but it's getting really, really close, and these are readily available. And if the interest is there, I could make a full tutorial video, so let me know down below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.